Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Warhammer 40,000 Regicide. It's Warhammer Chess. Ish. Kind of. It's by Hammer 4 Publishing. And that's exactly what I thought when I first saw the trailer for this. Warhammer Chess, what the hell are they doing? Why? Games Workshop, the guys behind the Warhammer universe, have been farming out the license for both Fantasy and Warhammer 40,000 to pretty much anybody that will take it. And it's resulted in a selection of pretty poor titles that really only pay, pay lip service to the universe and don't really seem to care about anything else. And Storm of Vengeance is probably the worst example on PC, but mobile is also rife with various rather poor 40k games. So I assumed Regicide would be one of those, and I am pretty happy to say that I was mistaken, at least to some degree. Let's go to the options menu of a chess game, because... <laughs> Separate audio sliders, always nice to see. Video options, barely any, pretty disappointing. Also a weird bug, so I usually turn V-Sync off because I have a G-Sync monitor, and usually V-Sync increases input lag and all that sort of thing, I never really have a problem with tearing. However, if I turn V-Sync off in this game, the game actually locks to 60. If I have V-Sync on, the game runs at a higher frame rate, as in more akin to the refresh rate of my 144Hz monitor. That's a very weird problem. I wish they would fix it. I would also be very grateful if they would constrain to window while playing in windowed mode. Please do that. A lot of games don't. It's pretty damn annoying. I don't want my cursor leaving my window. That would be inconvenient. Outside of that, you do have a few graphics options under graphics as opposed to video. So you've got AA. This would appear to be a Unity game based on the defaults here. These are Unity defaults, as you can probably see. Your performance in a chess game is probably going to be fine. Enable shadows, ambient occlusion, depth of field, and high quality models. Simple as that. Now, gameplay. You can turn off the kill cameras. But bear in mind, Regicide very much follows in the tradition of battle chess, as in... There are some pretty gory and rather fantastic animations for murdering people. Admittedly, you'll probably want to turn those off after a while, but initially you want to see them because, frankly, the animations are actually quite good. And then you've got inputs here, a few hotkeys here and there. Okay, so, I said chess, didn't I? Which probably made some of you turn off immediately. If you stuck around, then good, because I can tell you why it's not chess. So, Regicide has two different modes, Regicide and Classic. Classic is chess. Essentially, that means that you are playing battle chess. You're playing chess with orcs and space marines. Simple as that, with Warhammer 40,000 sounds and weapons and all that kind of thing. But you are playing chess. Regicide is based on chess, but it also integrates elements of turn-based tactical games. So it's probably best that I show you how that works. I'm going to dive into a skirmish here, and I will show you exactly how that operates. New game versus AI. Thank you very much. So I can pick Space Marines or Orcs, and you can do some customization as to the kind of abilities that you want to go into your loadout. I'm going to play against Master Level here, just to try and up the difficulty a little bit. And we'll talk about the AI in a moment. So you've got a choice of different Space Marine factions. They all do the same sort of thing. Space Marine chapters, not factions. And I'm going to pick the Raven Guard because the Blood Angels are massively overplayed. Thank you very much. You also have a couple of different options up to the top here. You can choose as to whether or not you want to go first or second. You can put time limits on. You can actually change the maps around if you like. And obviously, for the most part, these are just visual. So we could go Cathedral Day, Cathedral Night, Ancient Forest Day, Ancient Forest Night. That looks good. We'll go with that. All right, let us begin. And of course, you can see that the classic chess layout is in play here. All right, let's dive into the game and show you the difference between Regicide and Chess. There are quite a few differences. Okay, so that looks like a chessboard to me, doesn't it? So you have to make an initial chess move. Tactical so tactical. I will open by moving my Tactical Marine, aka my Pawn, forward two spaces. There we go. Now you get Initiative. Now the Initiative phase allows you to use abilities. So with this guy, for instance, I can grab my Frag Grenade. And I can toss a frag grenade at the enemy orcs, which has a 75% chance of hitting each of them for damage. Yes, the pieces have health, as you can see. So you immediately, I think, see the difference between chess and this, for obvious reasons. You have to make a chess move, and chess rules still apply. That means that you can only move 
in the direction and the number of squares that a chess piece could regularly move. So my Psyker here is the queen, so he can move an unlimited number of squares in all directions. Tactical Marines are pawns, so they can move forward two spaces to begin with, and then one space otherwise, and they can only take an enemy piece diagonally, and so on and so forth. You, I imagine, know what that's all about. So I can move my Assault Marine, which is my Knight, all the way over here, and he can now threaten that pawn. But there are other ways to threaten that pawn, like chopping it into pieces. I can choose to Assault. I can use my initiative points to start to do damage to that pawn. So you can directly take an enemy unit, just like you can in chess, and it will guarantee the destruction of that unit. Alternatively, you can just shoot the unit or chop it into pieces and it will eventually die, which is a rather interesting take on the whole thing. So you have a mixture of a tactical battle game with some of the rules of chess. You also have these abilities down at the bottom here, which are loadout based abilities. And they will give you the ability to drop down, say, a shield. I could put a shield on this guy, which means the next attack will be absorbed. Will not absorb being taken in the chess manner, but it will absorb damage. Chapter Banner allows me to bolster weapon skill of nearby marines, so increase my hit chance and all that sort of thing. Only in death is healing, and I have a psychic ability there. And my different units also have abilities that are specific to them. For instance, my Terminators down here, aka my Rooks, have Crux Terminatus, which is a shield. My king can actually use a Bombardment, which is a 5 initiative AoE, which does a lot of damage. My Psyker has a couple of Psychic abilities, I can drain life, and I can cause confusion, all that sort of thing. So, a little bit of unique flavor, and there is a there is a small difference between the way that the Orcs play and the way that the Space Marines play, both in terms of the abilities they have available, as well as their statistics. And we'll show those in a minute. So he's moving his Bishop out, aka his Looter. And he's going to be able to do damage here. So let's see what he's threatening. He's just threatening pawns. I'm not really too worried about that. So I could quite easily take his pawn here. Admittedly, if I do that, I open myself up to losing my knight to his queen, aka his weird boy over there. So I might not necessarily want to do that. Unless I want to draw his queen out, but I don't really have a good way of handling that at the moment. I can get one, though, certainly. Now the question is, how exactly do we want to handle the possibility of that queen? Well, I mean, we could just gun this orc down instead of trying to take him. That's the weird thing about it. You think about it as a chess game, and then you immediately realize, well, there is a solution, isn't there? I could, I could just beat the snot out of this guy, and that'd be fine, right? And you are correct. I'm going to move my Devastator Marine up here, and I can now assault, if I so desire which is not especially effective with the Devastated Marine, but I got a critical hit there, so it didn't matter. Now, I was talking about statistics. These are the stats here. So, Orcs generally take more punishment than Marines do. However, Marines generally have higher armor and weapon skills, so they have a higher chance to hit in range. However, some of them maybe don't have as much strength, so these guys have strength 5... Uh, actually, don't. Never mind. Ignore me. These guys have strength 4. This guy has strength 5, so they're going to be doing more damage in melee and all that sort of thing, so... Everything seems to be relatively balanced from what I can tell, but I'd have to play a lot more of the game to really figure out just how good the balance is, if at all. All right, I would really like to kill him if possible. Grenade might finish him off, so if we toss a grenade over here, then we can do some damage. We might be able to kill him with a frag grenade. That would be quite nice if we did. And we didn't manage it. Never mind. We do have one more initiative point, so maybe we can shoot him with something. Do we have range at all? We do, actually. There we go. So we can take a 70% chance on the snapshot and kill him that way, and down he goes. Nice. Okay. You, you, you get the idea, right? So, question is how well does it work? Well, oh, damn. Nasty. I got a double assault off and killed my Devastator. It works relatively well, actually. I find the strategy of this game to be very interesting. I like to, I like the fact that I have to consider chess moves, but I also have to worry about just being absolutely destroyed. So some of the moves that I might use in a traditional chess match, such as, you know, throwing my queen across the map and, or the board even, and starting to take units. That sounds a great idea in theory until you realize, well, if my queen's over there and I'm surrounded by orcs, they can just assault me and kill my queen rather than even taking my queen. So that's a different facet of the game that you have to consider, and I find that really interesting. Alright, I'm just looking for threats here. So, I could lose a pawn here, don't really care too much about that. That's fine here, I really need to start opening up the ability to get my rooks out if possible. 
aka my Terminators. But the best way to do that would be to move forward. There we go. So I think the combination is really quite neat. I think it's it's pretty fun, and I've enjoyed myself with it up to this point. However, as much as I think the regicide mode works pretty well, the AI is clueless and has no idea how to play it. So I tried both traditional chess and regicide. In chess, I lost repeatedly to the master level AI. I'm not the world's best chess player at all. I know how to play. I haven't really played seriously. But the master level AI pretty much took me to school. And if you want the answer as to whether or not it plays a decent enough game of chess, well, it seems to play a decent enough game of chess, from what I can tell. What it doesn't do is play a decent enough game of... I skipped an animation there. I shouldn't have done that. What it doesn't do is play a decent game of Regicide. It plays a pretty piss-poor game of Regicide, even on the higher difficulty levels. Both in the campaign mode and in the skirmish, the AI is brain-dead. I have had situations where it has fed its queen to me in three turns for no reason. Speaking of bad decisions, by the way, I just left my queen open. I would be quite surprised if the AI actually decides to take it, though. To be fair, I could very easily just take his queen, so it, it really depends on what he wants to do there. But I left my queen open to attack, so he could take my queen, then I could take his queen using my king. And my king's not really in, under any threat there, so I could do that. But the AI is probably going to make some other weird move, as he has a tendency to do. Alright, I've got one more initiative point left. What do I want to do with it? Well, this guy needs to go to ground, I think. Or I could just iron halo him. There we go. Because I think he's going to get pounded. Let's see what he decides to do here. Alright, not much. So he's gonna move his knight over there, his storm boy. Oh, I forgot about that ability. As you saw my guy explode there. So the weird boy has an ability that allows you to instantly kill something at low HP. So I was dumb, forgot about that, and should have actually used my heal on that instead of my shield. So that was pretty stupid, but there you go. So I need to think about moving this queen out of the way right now. Alternatively, I could just suicide right into his, which doesn't make any sense so let's not do that i'd rather wait for him to make a mistake with his queen which they so often do it's got to be pretty damn hard to teach an ai to play regicide you know teaching an ai to play chess at least at a rudimentary level and kind of get most of it right isn't that hard i suppose although making it play at a truly masterful level where it can actually beat a human opponent nah, that's a different matter entirely however getting the ai to play regicide and con consider both chess moves and the fact that you can actually shoot and assault at enemies using statistics-based combat is really difficult, it would seem. And the AI is pretty hopeless at it. Like I said, plenty of dumb moves. I'm probably going to lose this one just because I said that, but... As I said, it, um, it makes so many mistakes, and I've won every game against the AI on every difficulty level up to this point. This also means that the campaign is not in any way challenging. I'm under threat here. I probably want to get out of the way, but it seems like the... It's... Can I... Why can I move? Did I move a guy and not realize? Why can't I move him? Oh, we'll put my, guy, we'll put my king in check, of course, yeah. <laughs> That's another thing to consider. It's like, oh yeah, I forgot. It's chess. I should probably remember that. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Can I freely take him? No, because of that queen over there. You know, it wouldn't surprise me, though, if I went for that and the queen just ignored it. I don't want to take that risk, though, for fear of looking like an idiot. So I think we just have to try and murder him, if it's all possible. We might have the firepower to do it. If we assault with three guys, we should be okay. So let us do that. Assault, 95% chance of a hit. If I don't kill him, then I'm going to lose my... Assault Marine, most likely. Yep. All right. Well, that lets you get to see an animation, so that's pretty cool. The animations are really pretty awesome, honestly. They're very, very nicely put together, and he puts my king in check in the process. Not that we really have a problem there. You might say, oh, that's an issue. You've got to move your king. Well, no, because I can literally shoot that guy. The interesting thing is, of course, if you fail to kill a piece when you're in check, then you lose the game. Which is really intriguing. Admittedly, I think uh, due to the chess rules, I still have to move something. I actually have to move my queen in position here because 
There is nowhere that I can safely move this guy. So you still have to abide by the laws of chess in the movements phase. That's maybe the best way to describe it. Half the game is chess and half of it's not. In the movement phase, you're playing chess. In the initiative phase, you're playing regicide. That's the best way to describe it. I'm interested to see what he's going to do with his queen now. That would be very intriguing. All right, let's see what we can do. So we should just be able to kill him immediately. And we did. There we go. Problem solved. For the time being. And we could toss some more abilities around if we so desire. I could use a sail to weaken these fellows, perhaps. Just, like, freeze them up, make sure they can't do anything. Bear in mind that none of these abilities can affect the enemy's chance to move in the chess phase. So none of these abilities affect the chess phase at all. All right, he has chosen not to take my queen for the time being, which I don't really mind. We've we'll probably got the firepower just to bring that guy down at this point. He threatens my pawns. I'm not really too worried about that. I think we'll probably just move him. We actually don't have to move him at all. He's totally fine, but we, we really want to kill that guy this turn, so let's just give that a shot, shall we? So as I said, AI kind of sucks. So that means that, unfortunately, you're probably going to be having the most fun in this game. And I hope I don't mess this up. By playing against human opponents. Thankfully, the multiplayer seems to work pretty well. I got into games very quickly. I didn't run into any lag problems or anything along those lines. So the game appears to function just fine as a multiplayer game. And that, I think, is where you're going to be finding most of your enjoyment. It does have a pretty lengthy campaign, quite a few missions for that, and playing the campaign will allow you to earn experience, which will earn you skill points, and I missed, that sucks. Oop, might lose a piece now. Ouch, a lot, of, a lot of damage, could lose my queen here. Hopefully not. Ooh, thankfully didn't. The campaigns are kind of fun, because not only do they have really, really nice voice acting, and... As far as I'm concerned, a pretty fantastic story, at least for Warhammer 40,000 anyway. You know, it's well written, it seems to be sticking to the lore of the universe very, very well, which I am a big fan of. However, it also has a bunch of different rules. So each mission will give you a different number of units, give you a different layout, and give you primary and secondary objectives. For instance, there'll be a mission where you only get assault marines, so everybody moves like a knight. There'll be missions where you only have devastators and all that sort of thing. And it's interesting, but the AI is dumb. It's it's dumb as a brick, unfortunately. It makes ridiculous moves. It just feeds the units to the enemy. I, I think the main problem with it, and I'm going to make an assumption here because I don't know exactly how the AI works, is that what appears to be happening is the AI will make moves based on how much HP the unit has instead of whether or not it would make the unit vulnerable to being taken in the chess phase. I think that might be the issue. That's just a theory. I could be completely wrong there. We're going to life leech here to hopefully survive. Although I'm... Yeah, that should work actually. And that should also kill him off. That's That might be how it works. That might have something to do with it. That's my theory at any rate. He's not at 20%, so he might be okay. I think we should probably just heal him up, actually, at this point. But unfortunately, that makes the game a lot less enjoyable to play. So, play it against humans for the best experience. And he's trying desperately to kill my queen, and it can't. That's, that's good. <laughs> there you go. The overall game, I think, is really well put together. The units are nicely animated. It looks like 40k, it sounds like 40k, and the mixture of chess and a tactical battle game is intriguing and seems to work pretty well. He seems to have left himself completely open to that. Unfortunately, you've got to bear in mind that I could charge in here, kill his rook, but I could still lose because I'm in assault range. So that is something to bear in mind, although I could actually stun the units around him. I'm going to take the risk, let's go for it. I'm going to take a little bit of a risk here. That also lets me show you again an animation, which is always fun. But yeah, if they improve that AI, I think they'll be in a fantastic position.
because, of course, they will improve the replayability of the game. As it stands, this game is going to live or die based on its player base. It does have an online player base. It's not a big online player base, but it does have one. There is an element of persistence. When you level up, as I said, you're able to unlock abilities for your army. So you can customize your force to a certain extent, although you can't customize the different pieces. They all have a set of statistics and moves that is consistent. I think we're going to probably drop a shield down on him now to try and keep him alive. Have I opened myself up for an attack from the queen? I don't think so. We could go to ground. Alternatively, we could use a shockwave, which potentially, yeah, that's going to stun these guys, so they're not going to be able to attack me directly, which is cool. There we go. Hopefully I survive this. Oh, he's got extra Erdy. Damn it. I thought I was high enough to avoid that. Evidently not. Oh, well. Tactical squad ready to move. But it's a fun game. If you can find people to play it with. I think it's a really interesting idea. If you're going to play straight up chess and you just want Warhammer 40,000 themed chess, then the game does that pretty well. There's nothing to really worry about there. It, it plays a decent enough game of chess. Based on my limited ability to actually play chess. I'll put down a chapter banner here to give me a boost. There we go. Now we can try and murder him, hopefully. Plays a decent enough game of chess. Plays a piss poor game of regicide. So if you can find some people to play it with, you should be able to find some enjoyment here. And really, I'd say the game is better than it really has any right to be. A Warhammer 40,000 chess game should suck. And it doesn't suck, which is great. I'm very happy that it doesn't suck. It's unexpected. <laughs> it's a bit of a surprise, but it doesn't suck. So, hey, there you go. Regicide, ladies and gentlemen. Available for $15 or your regional equivalent on Steam. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.